Good morning, everyone. My name is LC. I'm the owner of the Fish and Production. That is uh, a place I dedicated to do my writing. I'm an author, a poet, and also a speaker. And if you want more information about this, I have a link, thevisionproduction.com is down there. So on this channel, I talk about culture. As a native of Zimbabwe, I talk about my culture in Zimbabwe and also infused in the, the cultures of America and also other parts of the world. So today I am going to talk about some of the things in the culture that never go away. I think a lot of you who are from somewhere else, you are a diaspora, you live in another country, you can attest that there are some things that never leave you. And with that, I'm going to begin with uh, how I keep my hair. How I keep my hair is a natural way that we do in Zimbabwe. Uh, people, they adapt other ways of doing things like uh, perming the hair, uh, braiding, uh, doing any other way, putting extensions, any other way. It's an adaption of the way how we really uh, do our hair. I would say growing up all my life, I never really do much of anything to my hair. Not because I couldn't do, but I chose a path of keeping my hair pretty much what you see me now. So it's one of the things that I would say really, I never really changed. It's something that I try to just keep the way it is and stay there. And it's actually good for me. Uh, when I first came to America, I tried because, you know, the American culture, almost everyone do something to their hair. Something. If they don't do nothing, they braid it. They, they do something. They put a wig. They, they put extension. They perm. They do gel curls. They do anything. Something else, you know. So with that, you know, I sort of like got into it. And after a while, I literally came to realize, actually, it wasn't for me. <laughs> I realized I was pretty good with my hair the way it is. And I have kept my hair like this for many, many years now. So it's one of those things. The next thing I want to talk about, it's going to come maybe in two or three parts, actually, of this. So instead of one, two, three, I'm just going to talk about this thing as a one thing, but it's really like three things. And that's about the kind of food or the kind of meals that I still maintain as a Zimbabwean. Uh, one of it, something that I keep in my cabinets all the time is cornmeal. Cornmeal is something that, you know, it's not a native of South America, but in my cabinet, I keep cornmeal. And it's not the type of cornmeal that has flour, um, you know, it's like kind of like a, with the addings, a lot of different things that are added, salty and all that. It's plain cornmeal. I have a very difficult time to find this kind of cornmeal. Uh, sometimes I go to the African store, which is not like a lot of them. And finally, I bumped into this um, place where they sell Albanian or Romanian uh, stuff. And I got that cornmeal. I was just trying to see what it is like. And I was really pleased. That cornmeal is much more closer to like the cornmeal that we use in Zimbabwe. So I, I go there, even though it's a little bit expensive. But, you know, because I have to keep cornmeal, because this is our meal. This is like the real uh, meal that we use almost on a daily basis, just like the Orients, the Chinese, the Koreans, the Japanese, they use rice. We use cornmeal. We use cornmeal for everything, you know, so uh, I keep cornmeal. We, along with that, I'm going to talk about the other side that I still do. And this is also something that is um, not so common, especially to the young people of Zimbabwe too. You know, they don't really cook meals uh, that way anymore. But I, I bet you maybe their grandmother do that. But maybe their mother, they might not be doing it, but the grandmother was doing that. And that's peanut butter stew. I still cook peanut butter stew. I cook it, I would say, not too regular, 
because it's not and uh, very familiar here so as i cook for the family i can't cook it regular but the more i'm like me and my husband, I cook it a little bit even more regular because, you know, I don't have to worry about the children not wanting in. But uh, peanut butter stew, I use it for three different ways, okay? I use peanut butter stew on fresh vegetables. That means the greens that we cook, the cabbage, um, kale, uh, I would put, you know, um, peanut butter stew. And also in Zimbabwe, any of the vegetable, any from the vegetable like pumpkin seeds, watermelon, cucumber, um, you know, uh, what you call um, okra, uh, any of the vegetables that we use in Zimbabwe, all of them, they also get to be dried. So anything that we use, either from our gardens or from the fields, all of them, they get to be also dried. Why? Because during the winter and summer seasons, those vegetables are not there. And you can't really grow a lot of things because everything is grown natural. You have to, the sun has to be there, the rain, the this, the that. The gardens, we can still water. But at the same time, sometimes it's really too hot for the veggies to maintain all the time. Uh, you know, so winter, sometimes the vegetables can't hold on on the harsh winters. So those vegetables, we dry once we have the gardens and we are, you know, we dry them too. And then the next thing, so what do you do with the dried vegetables? Now we have to recook them. And then when we recook them, we can put also peanut butter. And then it becomes another peanut butter stew. And then we eat again together with the cornmeal, the sadza. Um, the other area that I want again to let you know is about the same peanut butter stew. It's also used with the dried meat. We call it chimu, chimukuyu. Chimukuyu is dried meat in the Zimbabwean language. Dried meat that we basically dry. How do we do that? Okay. People have access meat sometimes. They slaughter a cow, a goat, a sheep, uh, anything bigger to the point where they cannot use all that meat. And they have to preserve it. So what they do, they cut it up in like a string, um, you know, way, some way of cutting it up in like a, some kind of string way. And then they season it with uh, salt to make sure that they are going to kill the bacteria. Some people, they will put it on uh, above charcoal, hard charcoal, and it will just start drying. Some people, they will kind of re-boil it a little bit, like boil it a little bit, and then they do the same thing. They put it on hard charcoal. So what I do here, because I don't have <laughs> those access of the chimkuyu, I can't get it. There's no way I can get chimkuyu exactly. I get jack meat, but it's very different. It's first of all sliced so thinly, and it's the way it's dried, I'm not sure. You cannot recook it for some reason. It's not like it comes out normal to recook it. So it's just different. So what I would do sometimes, I'll buy a big chunk of uh, beef rolls, and I'll do the same process, and I put it, I, I heat up the, the oven, then I, I turn the oven off, then I put it there to dry with just the heat that's there. That's the way I make my, I had to come up with that, you know. So if you are also struggling, like how do you get the uh, chimkuyu, you know, in a country where you are, you may as well just uh, hear from me. Maybe uh, if you are interested or if this sounds real good to you and you want to hear more, maybe I can make a video when I am making the uh, uh, chimkuyu, uh, jack meat, and I'm also making the peanut butter stew with vegetables, dried vegetables, and also chimkuyu. If you want to know about that, I can make another video. Maybe I'll do it in pieces where, you know, you can, you know, follow along well and um, make that. But then I would take that meat after it's dried, well dried, and I'll recook it again. And then I put my peanut butter.
you know, then I make that stew again. Oh my God, this, is, this dish is good. <laughs> I mean, you know, and when you go to Zimbabwe, this is like something they have to offer you everywhere you go. And they want you to try as a person who don't know the culture of Zimbabwe. This is part of the culture. This is what our ancestors, the great, great, great ancestors have been using because these are natural things. These are things that have been there ever since. So they don't have to struggle to find these things. These are there. You know, they've been handing and the peanut butter in the field and all that. So, and they make their own peanut butter, natural, fresh, everything. So, I mean, it's amazing. So this dish is something to try when you go to Zimbabwe. Don't miss that. You have to try that, okay? And the last that I'm going to give you is the tea and bread. I really came from the real authentic things to something a little bit not so authentic, but have been widely used in Zimbabwe. And that's the tea and bread. Um, most homes, you know, in between meals or whatever, they'll give people some tea and some bread. Or sometimes they'll give you tea and uh, no they'll give you a drink which is like a coke or orange juice or something like that with some bread here it's really weird my husband still sees that to be weird he still sees that to be i don't know what you're doing you know but to us it's very normal it's very common and i still do that i'll take a piece of bread put some butter there and I have my, my tea and I'll sit down and I just enjoy that morning tea and bread or afternoon or evening, whatever it is, I'll just enjoy it because it's something that I still keep and I still do and it's normal. There's nothing that I think about besides it's normal. So if you do enjoy this, you enjoy this video, you enjoy what I'm doing here, please subscribe and also ring the notification bell so that you can be notified as I bring more videos. And also please don't forget to share the video to other people who might also gain something they might enjoy, they might, you know, um, you know, also want to share with others, you know. So that's the way how we can do that. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.